An apsis Greek, hapsis plural apsides, Greek, hapsides is an extreme point in the orbit of an object. The word comes via Latin from Greek and is cognate with apse. For elliptic orbits about a larger body, there are two apsides, named with the prefixes peri from peri, peri meaning near and ap, arpo from ap, o, ap o, meaning away from added to a reference to the body being orbited. For a body orbiting the Sun, the point of least distance is the perihelion, and the point of greatest distance is the aphelion. The terms become periastron and apostron when discussing orbits around other stars. For any satellite of Earth, including the Moon, the point of least distance is the perigee and greatest distance the apogee. For objects in lunar orbit, the point of least distance is sometimes called the perisynthion and the greatest distance the aposynthion. Perilune and apolune are also used. For an orbit around any barycenter, the terms periapsis and apoapsis or apapsis are used. Perisenter and apocenter are equivalent alternatives. A straight line connecting the periapsis and apoapsis is the line of apsides. This is the major axis of the ellipse, its greatest diameter. The center of mass, or barycenter, of a two body system lies on this line at one of the two foci of the ellipse. When one body is sufficiently larger than the other, this focus may be located within the larger body. However, whether this is the case, both bodies are in similar elliptical orbits. Both orbits share a common focus at the system's barycenter, with their respective lines of apsides being of length inversely proportional to their masses. Historically, in geocentric systems, apsides were measured from the center of the Earth. However, in the case of the Moon, the barycenter of the Earth–Moon system or the Earth–Moon barycenter as the common focus of both bodies' orbits about each other, is about 75% of the way from Earth's center to its surface. In orbital mechanics, the apsis technically refers to the distance measured between the barycenters of the central body and orbiting body. However, in the case of spacecraft, the family of terms are commonly used to refer to the orbital altitude of the spacecraft from the surface of the central body, assuming a constant standard reference radius. Topic: Mathematical formulae. These formulae characterize the perisenter and apocenter of an orbit. Perisenter Maximum speed V per equals one plus E mu one minus E A Text style V underscore text per equals SQRT frac one plus E mu one E A at minimum perisenter distance r per equals 1 minus e a text style r underscore text per equals 1 e a apocenter minimum speed v app equals 1 minus E mu one plus E A text style V underscore text app equals SQRT frac one E mu one plus E a at maximum apocenter distance R app equals one plus E A Text style R underscore text app equals one plus E a. While, in accordance with Kepler's laws of planetary motion based on the conservation of angular momentum and the conservation of energy, these two quantities are constant for a given orbit. Specific relative angular momentum H equals one minus E two mu a 
Display style H equals SQRT left one E carrot two right muer specific orbital energy Epsilon equals minus mu two Display style the epsilon equals frac mu two a, where a is the semi-major axis equals r per plus r app two. Display style equals frac r underscore text per plus r underscore text app two. Mu is the standard gravitational parameter. E is the eccentricity, defined as E equals R app minus R per R app plus R per equals one minus Two R app R per plus one display style E equals frac R underscore text app R underscore text per R underscore text app plus R underscore text per equals one frac two frac R underscore text app R underscore text per plus one Note that for conversion from heights above the surface to distances between an orbit and its primary, the radius of the central body has to be added, and conversely. The arithmetic mean of the two limiting distances is the length of the semi-major axis A. The geometric mean of the two distances is the length of the semi-minor axis B. The geometric mean of the two limiting speeds is minus 2 Epsilon equals mu display style sqrt minus two the epsilon equals sqrt frac mu a, which is the speed of a body in a circular orbit whose radius is a display style topic terminology. The words «perecenter» and «apocenter» are often seen, although periapsis, apoapsis are preferred in technical usage. Various related terms are used for other celestial objects. The «g», «helion», «astron» and «galacticon» forms are frequently used in the astronomical literature when referring to the Earth, Sun, stars and the galactic center respectively. The suffix Jove is occasionally used for Jupiter, while Saturnium has very rarely been used in the last 50 years for Saturn. The G form is commonly used as a generic closest approach to planet term instead of specifically applying to the Earth. During the Apollo program, the terms Perisynthian and Aposynthian referencing Cynthia, an alternative name for the Greek moon goddess Artemis were used when referring to the Moon. Regarding black holes, the term peri, apomelasma from a Greek root was used by physicist Geoffrey A. Landis in 1998, before peri, aponogracon from Latin appeared in the scientific literature in 2002, as well as peri, apobothron from Greek bothros, meaning hole or pit. Terminology summary The following suffixes are added to peri and arpo to form the terms for the nearest and farthest orbital distances from these objects. For the solar system objects, only the suffixes for the Earth and Sun are commonly used, the other suffixes are rarely, if ever used. Instead, the generic suffix of apsis is used. Perihelion and aphelion Etymology 
The words perihelion and aphelion were coined by Johannes Kepler to describe the orbital motion of the planets. The words are formed from the prefixes peri Greek, peri near and arpo Greek, arpo away from affixed to the Greek word for the Sun. Earth Currently, the Earth reaches perihelion in early January, approximately 14 days after the December solstice. At perihelion, the Earth's center is about 0.98329 astronomical units, o or 147,098,070 kilometers, 91,402,500 miles from the Sun's center. In contrast, the Earth reaches aphelion currently in early July, approximately 14 days after the June solstice. The aphelion distance between the Earth's and Sun's centers is currently about 1.01671 astronomical units or 152,097,700 kilometers, 94,509,100 miles. Dates change over time due to precession and other orbital factors, which follow cyclical patterns known as Milinkovitch cycles. In the short term, the dates of perihelion and aphelion can vary up to two days from one year to another. This significant variation is due to the presence of the Moon. While the Earth Moon barycenter is moving on a stable orbit around the Sun, the position of the Earth's center, which is on average about 4,700 km miles from the barycenter, could be shifted in any direction from it, and this affects the timing of the actual closest approach between the Sun's and the Earth's centers, which in turn defines the timing of perihelion in a given year, because of the increased distance distance at aphelion, only 93.55% of the solar radiation from the Sun falls on a given area of land as does at perihelion. However, this fluctuation does not account for the seasons, as it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere when it is winter in the Southern Hemisphere and vice versa. Instead, seasons result from the tilt of Earth's axis, which is 23.4 degrees away from perpendicular to the plane of Earth's orbit around the Sun. Winter falls on the hemisphere where sunlight strikes least directly, and summer falls where sunlight strikes most directly, regardless of the Earth's distance from the Sun. In the Northern Hemisphere, summer occurs at the same time as aphelion. Despite this, there are larger land masses in the Northern Hemisphere, which are easier to heat than the seas. Consequently, summers are 2.3 degrees Celsius 4 degrees Fahrenheit warmer in the Northern Hemisphere than in the Southern Hemisphere under similar conditions. Astronomers commonly express the timing of perihelion relative to the vernal equinox not in terms of days and hours, but rather as an angle of orbital displacement, the so-called longitude of the periapsis also called longitude of the pericenter. For the orbit of the Earth, this is called the longitude of perihelion, and in 2000 it was about 282.895 degrees. By the year 2010, this had advanced by a small fraction of a degree to about 283.067 degrees. For the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, the time of apsis is often expressed in terms of a time relative to seasons, since this determines the contribution of the elliptical orbit to seasonal variations. The variation of the seasons is primarily controlled by the annual cycle of the elevation angle of the Sun, which is a result of the tilt of the axis of the Earth measured from the plane of the ecliptic. The Earth's eccentricity and other orbital elements are not constant, but vary slowly due to the perturbing effects of the planets and other objects in the Solar System. See Milinkovitch cycles on a very long time scale, the dates of the perihelion and of the aphelion progress through the seasons, and they make one complete cycle in 22,000 to 26,000 years. There is a corresponding movement of the position of the stars as seen from Earth that is called the apsidal precession, this is closely related to the precession of the axis. The dates and times of the perihelions and aphelions for several past and future years are listed in the following table. Other planets 
The following table shows the distances of the planets and dwarf planets from the Sun at their perihelion and aphelion. The following chart shows the range of distances of the planets, dwarf planets and Halley's Comet from the Sun. The images below show the perihelion green dot and aphelion red dot points of the inner and outer planets. Perihelion and aphelion points See also Eccentric anomaly Perifocal coordinate system Solstice Flyby spaceflight.